Hey guys, I'm Steve and I am pretty new to YouTube. This is my first real video that I'm making. Um, I'm a amateur photographer, very amateur. I've only been shooting for about two years. Um, and the reason I wanted to make some of these is because I learned how to shoot with my first camera on YouTube, like a lot of uh, you guys do. But I would seek out professionals and, you know, it's great information, but sometimes I just don't understand what they're talking about. So it takes a little while, you know, have to search through hundreds of videos, but they're all very helpful and we definitely thank them for their time to be blogging um, for us to teach us how to use these cameras. Um, what I want to do is try to take that information and pass it on to people of my skill level, which is pretty amateur and new to the camera game. So I'm gonna talk about the first camera I bought about two years ago, which was the Canon M50, which I have here. Um, talk to you why I bought this, what I was looking for when I first was um, you know, researching cameras, and then talk a little bit about the new camera I purchased, which is the Sony a7 III, which I'm shooting on now. When I talk about that camera, I'm gonna swap out and then record with my Canon. So you might see a little change of quality, um, maybe not distortion, but shift in levels. Um, and then I'll tell you a little bit about what I love about that camera and features that, you know, I didn't know I was missing from this because this was my first camera. So I have some of my notes here. When I was looking for a camera, there were really three or four main points for me. Obviously, I did not want to spend five thousand three thousand two thousand dollars on a camera um, I know professional grade cameras could go up to twelve thousand dollars for a camera and even entry-level cameras could be three four five thousand dollars I didn't want to pay that much so I found the Canon M50 that year and my options were between this and a Nikon I don't remember which it was but this camera was way smaller so one, it hit the size point that I wanted. Two was the price. When I bought this, I think it was $650, maybe $700. That was not bad at all. Three, I wanted an articulating touchscreen, which when I bought it two years ago, I thought I would have been making videos like this two years ago. I haven't. So I never really got the most out of it, but it's still good when you're shooting video, you can pull it out this way, you can flip it, um, you could articulate it in so you're looking at the screen here. If you need to shoot high, you could flip the screen down. And if you need to shoot low, you could flip the screen up. So that was a big feature that I wanted. Perfect. Um, I wanted a mic input. So when I did record videos, I wouldn't be using the internal microphone that the camera has. This has one, it's on this side right here. And I also wanted it to be um, pretty easy to use. And like I said, never having a camera, I wouldn't have known what was difficult or what was easy. Um, when I first got this, it was kind of difficult for me to learn. But as I upgraded to um, a new Sony and I got into that menu, this camera is so much easier to use. Um, this isn't going to be a breakdown or a how-to video. Um, if you want that, um, whoever sees this video, just let me know down below. I probably won't get many hits on this one, but um, if there are any questions you have and you want me to explain it to you, <laughs> an amateur to an amateur, I will be happy to do that if I know the answer. But um, yeah, I just wanted to talk about what I was looking for and um, what I think about the camera. So that's pretty much for the Canon M50. Um, it's lightweight, it's very small. I mean, when I go to say Disneyland or I go on vacation uh, somewhere close where I don't wanna carry um, a larger camera, I'll just take the Canon with me and I'll shoot in 1080p. It shoots in 4K, um, it's cropped a little bit, but it still works. And if I go anywhere else, like for a hike, or if I go on vacation to, I don't know, Paris or Europe, I'll take both of my cameras. So, um, excuse me, I'm gonna cut the camera here and swap out, I'll record with the Canon, bring my Sony to the desk, and then I will go through 
all of the features that I love about this camera. Um, so give me a second, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Hopefully you guys could see me pretty well and it wasn't that big of a drastic change, but okay. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the camera I did upgrade to, which is the Sony a7 III, this camera right here. Um, I've only had it for about a week. This is an amazing camera. Um, I was originally thinking of upgrading to a Canon so I didn't have to change my lenses. Um, pretty much one of the most expensive parts of uh, taking video and photographs is having to upgrade your glass. Like one lens can be thousands of dollars. So um, it was a hard choice to switch and then have to buy all, all new um, lenses. But um, what are you going to do? A lot of the cameras that were... Um, a little bit more expensive. They weren't full frame. They were still crop sensor and they were a little bit more expensive. Um, so let me just go through my list and tell you a little bit about what I love about the Sony a7 III now that I have it. And like I said, if you um, want me to go through any of these in more detail um, and tell you how to use certain features or what certain features do, um, I'll record another video uh, for you guys um, in that case. So no further ado, let's get to my list that I have not memorized and I have it on my iPad. Okay, so the first note I have is I wanted a full, this is full frame mirrorless with 4K recording full frame. Now the M50 shoots great 1080p, it shoots great 4K as well, but it's a crop sensor to start with, which means you're not getting the full picture. And then 4K crops it even more. So if you're actually looking through the viewfinder and you're shooting video and you switch to 4K, it'll zoom in. So um, that kind of sucks. But I mean, I'm not a professional, so it's not that big of a deal to me. But to upgrade my camera, I wanted full frame. So the Sony um, Alpha series are, I believe, all full frame mirrorless cameras. So they take pictures, they shoot 1080p, and they shoot 4K video full frame. Oddly enough, there is an option that you can map to one of your buttons that crops it for you. So if you need a little bit of an extra zoom, you can do that. So that's pretty cool. Number two, the autofocus settings on this is crazy. Like when I got my Canon M50, I was going through all the focus points and I believe there's facial detection, which I'm using now. Um, there is zone, which is a smaller box that focuses just on that zone. So you can kind of move it around the screen and wherever your zone box is, it will focus there and anything outside the zone won't be focused. And then there was single point, which is literally just one square box. Um, there's two sizes and you move that around with your finger and you focus on wherever that box is. Three settings took me a while to learn and I thought I never was going to be able to figure it out. And then I got this camera. This has one, two, three, four, five, five different focus settings. Then it has a sixth lock setting, which is all of those features, now all of them locked. So I'll go over um, those with you right now. So just like the M50, this has wide focus, which is pretty much, it focuses the entire screen and it will kind of pick out what is more um, in front of the camera. So the, the, the easiest thing to focus on. So if it's moving around, um, it'll focus on something. But if another person walks through, it'll pick that up if they're in front of that person. So that's on both cameras. This also has zone, which is the same thing as full, only it's a smaller box where you can move around and it focuses in that zone. The third is center. The M50 has center as well. It literally focuses on the center of the screen. Pretty simple. Then it has flexible spot. This is similar to center where it's a square and you can drag it around the screen and it has three sizes, small, medium, and large. So if you're like taking a picture of a flower and you want to get into the middle of the flower, you could have a really, really small focal point and just pinpoint where you want, where a bigger focal box might not be able to pick it up. So that's pretty much what um, expanded flexible shot is. Lock on is all of those settings now locked. So if I used locked full frame, 
and I'm shooting and say it's I'm focused on a car it's gonna follow that car wherever it goes as long as I hold the shutter um, button halfway down and when I'm ready to take a picture I could take a picture but it won't lose focus same with zone center flexible spot and expanded flexible spot it will track everything which is really cool it's kind of like servo mode um, on the M50 Staying in detection and focus, facial detection is awesome in this camera. Facial detection is awesome in the M50, but in the M50, it is part of the tracking um, focus setting. In the A7 III, it's totally its own setting. So if I have it always on and I'm taking a picture of flowers or cars or landscape and there are no faces, it won't turn on. So I'm just using the focus setting that I'm on. If a person happens to walk by, which this is the only downfall of always keeping it on, it'll automatically track that face. And you don't want that if you're taking a picture of, you know, some buildings or um, some landscape, obviously. But if someone walks by and you do want it, you don't have to turn your focus off and then turn on facial recognition. Facial recognition overrides all the other options, which is really cool. So you could shoot in wide, excuse me, you could shoot in zone or full. And then if you don't have to remember to turn on the facial recognition, you could have your model come into frame. Bang, as soon as it sees its face, a little box will pop up and then a little, a smaller box will show up in their eye. Take pictures of your subject as, as soon as they leave the frame. That goes away and it goes right back into the focus mode that you're already on. So that's pretty cool. Let's see. Oh, you can focus on human spaces and you could also freaking focus on animals. Like if you have a dog, you could set the facial recognition to, an, to a pet. And then when you're taking pictures of your dog or your cat, it'll lock on to their face. Um, I haven't seen any videos with like, bears or lions like people in the wild so i don't know if it works with them but i've seen a lot of people take pictures of their cats and dogs and, and apparently it works perfectly i haven't been able to test that feature out yet what else do we have oh dedicated dials so obviously i'm not going to go into aperture iso and shutter speed but those basically are the three most important functions of a camera to get a good picture on the M50, um, they only have one dial, so when you're in there shooting, you just have to hit a button up. So you change, say, the ISO, you hit up, you change the shutter speed, you hit up again, you can change the um, uh, aperture. And it's not a big deal. It's pretty intuitive and really fast. If you're just like in the eye, it's not a big deal at all. But um, this camera, the Sony a7 III, has dedicated dials, so I don't have to worry about going into another option. I could have the front for my shutter speed. I could have the back for my um, aperture. And then this dial right here I could use for my ISO. So everything is already out there. I could change it without having to going into another setting, which is amazing for um, what is still considered an entry level camera. Um, the camera was $2,000. Um, it's not cheap, but it's not $10,000. And it is an upgrade over um, the Canon M50. What else do we have? Button mapping. The Canon M50 does not have button mapping. What that means is any setting that is in your camera, you can map to either C1, C2, C3, C4, function. So any button on here you can map. So for example, I believe I have focus on C2. So whenever I want to change my focus, instead of going into the menu, I just hit C2 and my focus options show up and I just change my focus there. Super convenient. Um, I, everybody uses button mapping. Every video I've ever watched, if they teach you how to take a, um, a landscape picture, they'll tell you exactly how they map their buttons and how they save it. Oh, that's actually not even on my list. There are two save points on the dial, save one and two. So I have, I set up all of my 4K recording all my settings and I saved it to number one 
and then I set up all of my 1080p functions and settings and I saved it into two. I'm probably going to delete um, the, the regular HD setting because I could just go into number one and change my 4K to 1080p and then shoot like that. I might save a um, portrait settings into number two. So I'll have video in number one and then when I want to take portraits I'll just flick the setting to number two and portrait um, settings will show up. So that's another great feature of the a7 III. What else do I have? Zebra display. So the um, getting rid of or taking properly exposed pictures is very hard for a beginner. Um, it took me a long time to even understand what it meant. This camera has a feature called zebra settings where once they are on, you just shoot, point at whatever you want to take a picture of, and any area that is too bright shows up like a zebra in black and white. And then you can dial down your ISO or um, mess with your shutter speed settings. And once the zebra lines go away, you know you're in perfect focus and you have perfect exposure. Meaning like literal perfect exposure. You can do whatever you want. If you want it a little bit brighter or darker, obviously you could do that. But it's just telling you that the exposure according to the camera is perfect. And that's uh, a big help. Uh, let's see. Our, oh, I did talk about the save settings. So I did have it written down. Dual memory card slots. The Canon M50, like uh, I'm guessing a lot of cameras at this price range, allow you to put one SD card in the memory slot. This camera has two slots. You probably can't see it. Maybe I could zoom in or get it um, in a picture I'll throw in here. Slot one is apparently the fastest slot. So I have my fastest card and I shoot video in there. Slot two is um, still a fast uh, memory card and I'll shoot pictures in there. So when you go in your settings, you can have it set. You want all your video to go to card one, all your pictures and photos to go to card two. Um, you could shoot to back it up. So you have everything going to both cards. Uh, you could set it to override. You could set it where even if card one is only for video, if you're taking pictures and card two fills up too fast, it'll shift to the, the other card so you don't miss taking any pictures and having any um, area or any space to save. So that's something that I didn't even know that I needed because I, I didn't know it existed. So there is that. Let's see. Battery life. This is something in general, battery life really it confuses me a little bit. I mean, we could like, we could shoot a rocket or something into space and land like a car at the perfect spot on the moon that we want it to go. But we, we haven't invented batteries that could have a item like a phone or a camera last all day. Like, that, that just boggles my mind. But the Canon M50, um, after doing some research, relative to, I think, any camera, the battery life is not very good. I think it is set for uh, 300 pictures on one charge. So I have two other batteries. So three batteries, I could take about 900 pictures. And it's not bad because I'm not a professional. I'm not going out there shooting a thousand shots, you know? So sometimes one battery is fine. Um, I'm actually shooting this video with the battery full charge and hopefully it doesn't run out because that would suck. But the a7 III's battery um, is a lot bigger. And since I have it here, I could take it out. It's probably twice the size as Canon's battery for that camera. And this, I think, goes up to about 700 shots. So this battery is about twice or maybe three times as long, depending on what kind of pictures you take or video. So I know a lot of people out there, battery life is very important regarding um, any kind of tech that you're using. Um, so that's definitely a big option. I do have a backup for this. The amount of pictures that I take I don't think I'm ever going to have to use it unless I'm, you know, somewhere and I'm practicing with um, one of my friends as a model and um, I'm out there for a couple of hours taking pictures. Then I'll probably need another battery, but I haven't come across that yet. Number 11, USB-C. 
I mean, it's newer, so obviously it would have newer ports. Um, if you have a computer that has USB-C or a Mac that has, I believe, Lightning, you could just go USB-C to Lightning and you could transfer everything. You don't need um, any dongles. The M50 does not. That one is, I think it's micro, micro USB, like the Android connector, but it doesn't use um, USB-C. So, I mean, I, I didn't expect it to. That camera came out two years ago, so I don't think it was standard back then. Oddly enough, the Canon M50 Mark II, which I did a video with my friend, uh, Bin Dung. <laughs> if you're on my video, you've definitely seen his videos. Um, we just did a video yesterday. That camera is coming out, I think, the end of this year, and it's the exact same camera as the M50. It's very weird. Same ports, same designs. I think it's like a firmware update, but um, I'm not on here to talk about that. But it does have USB-C, so... I know a lot of people um, are really into dedicated ports, and um, that works pretty well. I, I tested it yesterday. And I think I spoke about this earlier, the size and the weight I do like. It's a little bit bigger than my M50, but it feels, you know, I, could, I always tell it to my hand. It's well balanced. Um, it doesn't weigh a lot, but it weighs enough where it kind of feels like a DSLR. The M50, even though it looks like a mini DSLR, it is super, super light, which is good. This isn't too heavy. I could still take this anywhere I want, but it just feels really nice in my hand. Uh, there are actually two things on this. Well, one thing on the camera that I don't like and one thing about the camera that I don't like. The first thing is this does not have a articulated touch screen, which like I said, this is the first video I'm taking, so I shouldn't be complaining. This screen does pop out, but only directly like that. If you could see, it comes out and you could swivel up and down. It does not twist. So you cannot take a selfie with this, with the screen out. You would probably have to buy a dedicated, um, a dedicated screen to flip it around. I did see somebody actually modify the hinges to flip it down and he was taking uh, videos upside down and the screen was on the bottom, so that was pretty cool. Uh, if I remembered his name, I would link him uh, on here, but I think I've only seen like one of his videos, so. Yeah, no articulating touch screen on this. And then the connectivity app, or whatever they call it, is terrible. Sony's app is bad. It's just slow, you can't press the phone like on the M50, Canon's app, once I have it set up, I can literally touch the phone and focus my camera with my phone, which is pretty cool. But with Sony's, unless I'm doing it wrong, you can't do that. You can see everything you want, you can change the aperture, you can change the ISO and the shutter speed, but if you touch the phone, it doesn't focus. So maybe I'm doing it wrong. Um, if someone knows I'm doing it wrong, <laughs> let me know if you see this in uh, uh, write a, a comment below about that, but I can't figure that out whatsoever. Um, that looks like everything I had on my list. So I hope this was a, a, I hope this was a good video for everybody. If you have the M50 and you're looking to upgrade, or if you don't have a camera at all, if you do not have a camera and you're looking to buy one, I would personally suggest the Canon M50. Like I said, it's cheap. The new one comes out, so I would wait for Mark II because if you don't have a camera, the Mark II, I think, automatically uploads your videos. And, you know, a lot of people like to vlog um, live or just have one device, record their video like a cell phone, boom, upload it. So that's pretty cool. Everything else is pretty much the same. So I wouldn't recommend buying an M50 right now unless you can find it for like $200 new or $250 because the Mark II is going to come out in a couple of months anyway. So the M50 is a great price. It's a great size. It shoots great video um, with some drawbacks, but if you're like me and you're, you're new, it doesn't really matter. You, you're, you're not taking professional grade video. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. It has the mic input, like I said, so if you're gonna take it out to shoot some vlogs yourself and you're starting up, you can connect 
any microphone to the top that has an input. I use the Rode Micro because um, when I bought that, I, I didn't need like a, a Pro or um, I don't remember what the other one is called, but they're like about $200. I didn't need that at the time. And to be honest, I probably didn't need this at the time since this is the first video two years later and I'm repeating myself again that I've, I've taken. So um, obviously when I get this up to YouTube, I could check how the sound came out. I'm only in a room, I don't have a studio, so there's a lot of reverb in here. So it probably won't sound that great, but I'm going to invest in some lights maybe. I'm using natural light behind me. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, that's what I liked about the M50. Uh, that's what I love about my new camera. Some features that I did not even know that I needed until I saw them. Uh, if you, you know, if. If you'd like me to go into more detail, just let me know. If you don't know how to set your aperture or you want to know more about the focal levels, but you, you, you don't want to hear it from a professional where you might not understand, I might be able to explain it a, a lot easier. So that's all I have. Whoever views this, thank you so much for watching. I would say like and subscribe. I don't know how often I'm going to put videos out, but I'm going to try to put some out weekly. And um, yeah, just leave some comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think I could do better. Like I said, it's my first one, so I hope it all goes well. Um, everybody have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.